Welcome to Lab 11 for Physics 185. In today's lab, we're going to use Kepler's third law, which we used a little bit in the previous week's lab, to help us determine the mass of another planet in the solar system. Kepler's third law tells us that if we consider a number of, of objects that are orbiting a common central massive object, we know that the square of their period divided by the cube of the size of their orbit or the radius of the orbit is going to be equal to a constant. The value of that constant is actually related to the mass of that planet. We can do a little bit of physics to look at, compare the force that's keeping the object moving in orbit around that planet, the radius of the orbit and the size of that force would be necessary. But the end result of that is that if we want to find the mass of the planet, the mass of the planet is just equal to 4 pi squared times the radius cubed of the orbit divided by Newton's gravitational constant uh, divided by the square of the period of that orbit. A quick reminder, the radius of the orbit is expected to be in meters. The period of the orbit is expected to be in seconds. Make sure you check your lab report for any conversion factors or your lab manual for any conversion factors that you may need. This particular lab comes in two parts. There's a practice part that looks at the animation of the Galilean moons of Jupiter. We are actually not going to do that part. We are just going to work on Kepler's laws and look at the simulated behavior of a large massive planet with four moons orbiting. I'm going to open up the lab and show you what it will look like. And so this would be a field of view of the sky. Notice we have Jupiter. And then you can see these four dots that are moving back and forth around the sky. You can turn on a grid that will allow you to get the size of the orbit. So for example, you can count out how far each of these moons would come out in terms of their maximum displacement from Jupiter. And then notice you can measure the um, size of this based on the size of Jupiter's orbit or Jupiter's actual diameter. So what we're really going to measure here is notice that each one of these squares is equivalent to Jupiter's radius. The other thing you'll need to get for this particular experiment is you'll need to get a clock. And you notice what happened on my laptop is the top half of this window is open and the actual clock that should be visible down here at the bottom is not visible for me. If you can see the clock, everything's fine and you don't need to take any other steps. If you can see the clock, this is what you need to do. You need to close virtual astronomy completely. And you need to go to your desktop and change the resolution of your desktop to the lowest possible resolution you can have. I know this won't necessarily make your screen look very good, but um, you will have some very big icons. If you then go ahead and open virtual astronomy and open up the Kepler's laws and the orbits of moons, okay. now on this particular clock, notice I can make this screen a little bit bigger and now we can keep track of the time down here on the bottom. What you need to do for each of these particular moons is measure the size of the orbit and measure the time it takes these moons to move from this point right here looks to be about its farthest point away from Jupiter and so you will just simply track this moon it'll pass below the behind Jupiter go to the other side and eventually return back to this point I would strongly suggest that you treat each of these moons individually don't try to start the clock and then keep track of all four of these moons at the same time. Please treat all of the moons individually. The check your answers results, and again, don't forget to turn on the grid. The check your results is a number of different um, answers that you're going to have to use. So the angular width of the orbit in arc seconds is based on counting the number of squares that are um, shown on that particular screen. The diameter of the orbit in meters, again, 
if you have the, di the angular width of the orbit and you know how far away that object is from you, you can use the, the relationship we used when we were doing the angular size lab that converts arc seconds to radians and then multiplies it by the distance to get the actual dimensions of the orbit. The diameter is just twice the radius, so to get the radius of the orbit in meters, you just divide that by two. And then the period of the orbit in seconds would be your reading of the clock from when it started down here on the bottom to when that moon returned back to the original point. I would suggest that you check all of these answers. Each of these boxes should have a check mark behind it if you've done the, uh, made the measurements correctly. Be very, very careful with the period. You need to have a very good value for the period in order for this to check. It's typically easy to get these values right here. It's a little bit more tricky to get that period, and so uh, I'll just remind you to be very, um, pay very careful attention to measuring that time. Then you'll find the value of r cubed over t squared for each of those four moons. We'll find the average value, because what finding the average value does is it minimizes any errors you might have had in any of those individual calculations. And then the average value of r cubed over t squared just simply goes into this equation. So if your average value of r cubed over t squared happened to be 2, then the way you calculate the mass of Jupiter is you take 4 times pi squared divided by g times 2. Notice they're asking for the mass of the planet and Earth masses. So make sure after you've used this equation to get the mass of the planet in kilograms, you convert um, to the mass of the planet and Earth masses. So again, as always, it's important that you read the units on this check your answer screen to make sure that you put in what the actual lab is asking to do. So this is a technique that was used to measure the mass of Jupiter. Um, once we first notice the orbits of the moons, you're able to get a sense of, of what their orbits are like, and you can use that information to find the mass of an object that you'd never be able to actually put on a scale. As I mentioned before, the thing that might trip you up the most in this particular lab is not having an accurate value of the period of the orbit. The only advice I can give you is to be very careful and please remember you need to change or you may need to change your screen resolution in order to actually be able to view the clock. Good luck with the lab. If you have any questions, please send me an email.